I think that they'll have they'll have their work cut out. I think she's completely different to Hegerberg. I think obviously with Graham Hansen and Hegerberg, and I use those two because they're probably the best two centre forwards they felt like they were going to come up in the group stage against. And they'd have done their homework way before the tournament even started. They know how good these players are. Now, someone like Pock, she's so good at her movement. The second goal yesterday that she scored, the first goal, sorry, was unbelievable. You know, she gets in, Brand gets in down the right-hand side, puts it across. And what's so good about this German team, and they're so good at it, is whoever's playing, they're so good at delivering the ball early. And they're also really good at running with the ball and deliver it on the run. Ball does it, you know, Hoop does it. So these wide players are so, so good at that. And they provide a service. But her goal last night, one of the goals was like, ball comes in, it's a half, you know, the French defenders are trying to go in front of them and just hit it on the volley, you know, and, and she's so good. So you can't take your eye off her. And she's so dangerous. And one of the guys that I work with said, he's the best, she's the best um, female player he's ever seen live. And I said to him, wow, that's a pretty bold statement. He's like, no, she is. She's fantastic. And I think when you watch her live, you appreciate her even more because her movement is so good. She's always looking over her shoulder. She's always looking where to go. So Millie Bright and Leah Williamson will have their work cut out against her. I think it'll be probably their biggest test of the tournament because even though Spain, I think, was going to be the biggest test in Sweden, they didn't really have that threat up front with Spain, Gonzalez, you know, without Jenny Hermoso being there, it was different. So I think, you know, they're going to have their work cut out and some players, you can analyse them till next year, but you can't defend them because they're always a threat. It's the same as if someone's trying to, you know, figure out how to defend Messi and Ronaldo. You can only do so much and then you've got to hold your hands up and say, you know, this player is just very, very good and I'm going to do everything I can to stop them. See, this is difficult because I have a really, really strong opinion about this because I've been there before where I, when I played for Orlando Pride and it's not the same. But when I went there, they saw me as being a, a player coming off the bench because every time I came off the bench, I scored. And in the end, I left based upon that because they pigeonholed me and they saw me as this super sub. And I was only like 27 years old. I felt like it was in the prime of my career. So it's it's a blessing and a curse that Alessia has done so good coming off the bench because Ellen White is clearly the number nine for this tournament. She's someone that's reliable. She's someone that's the all-time leading goal scorer. So I completely get that. But when you look at performance during the tournament, from a, from a technical perspective, Alessia Russo has been better. But Ellen White has implemented the game plan from the start. Now, clearly it's something that's working. This isn't something that they're going to be able to use in, ne in the next tournament and the next tournament. Because for me, I think Alessia Russo takes Ellen White's spot within the next, you know, within the next couple of years, at least for me. I think that's pretty obvious. But right now... I think she probably goes with the right team. She goes with the same team because if she goes with Alessia Russo and it doesn't work out, everybody then will be saying, why didn't Ellen White start? So I think it's damned if you do, damned if you don't for Serena Wiegmann. But I believe she won't change the team because she hasn't during this whole tournament. And tactically against Spain, she needed to. I think she needed to take off probably Rachel Daly at half time and bring on Alex Greenman. And she just didn't. And we won. So it's almost like let her do what she's doing. Who am I to then question why she's taken off Frank Kirby and Beth Mead against Spain? Because it worked. So in Serena, we trust. I've said it many, many times. But I do think that we'll go with the same 11. And I think that's what she'll do. But Alessia Russo has been amazing. She could still get the golden boot herself. <laughs> I mean, coming off the bench. I don't think we've ever really seen that. Because um, it's still possible. She looks dangerous when she comes on. She gets on the ball. She turns. She plays other players in. And I think... Ella Toon, when they play together as well, when they come off the bench, they're very, very effective. And I think it helps that they're best friends. I do feel nervous. I think, obviously, it's a final. England are in a final. Last year, the men were in the final. They lost to Italy. So I'm hoping we can go that one step further. But I just think the fact that we're there, I think the whole country is so behind the team. Even people that are not on board with it before. Nine million people watched the game the other day and they're expecting more to watch the final. So... I'm expecting a difficult game against Germany. I'm expecting England to have to defend quite a bit. Not the same as they did against Spain. I don't think Germany will have all of the possession. But I do think that the way they attack with Hoot, if ball's back from COVID or if Brand plays, they play exactly the same way. And with Pop, you can't switch off for a second. So I think that the back line is going to have to defend a little bit better than they have done in some of the games. I think against Spain and against Sweden, the first 30 minutes, our back line were a little bit like out of position. I think Lucy Bronze was getting done down that side, not taking 1v1, but, you know, they were giving her a bit of a torrid time. And then she had this moment in the game where she regrouped, 
took her hair down, retied it, and then it was Lucy Bronze was on. And then she ended up getting a goal and an assist. And a lot of people were saying, you know, she didn't play well in the first 20 minutes. So every single player is going to have to do exactly what they've done. That includes the players coming off the bench because it doesn't seem like Serena Vigman was going to change the team. But having said that, Serena Vigman does whatever she wants and she has the right to do whatever she wants. So whenever we've questioned her, she should put Alice Greenwood in instead of Rachel Daly. She's everyone's talking about in England at the moment. If Alessia Russo should start instead of Ellen White, I don't think she will. I think she should, but I don't think she will. So all the players know their roles and responsibilities. And um, I think she'll go with the same team. I hope not, but obviously the stats do show that they are very good at that. And I think when they conceded in the dying seconds yesterday against France, that was a bit against the run of play when Diani like, kind of hit it and Fromm's hit it on the back of her head and went off as an own goal. But I think that kind of, it always looked like Germany were going to win. Even though it was 1-1 at halftime, it always looked like Germany were going to win. So I hope that stat doesn't doesn't work. I don't think, I think England do start slow, but they luckily they don't concede. Whereas, and I think they ride the wave. Whenever they're under pressure, whenever people are coming at them, they always seem to know how to handle it. And I think you have to have a little bit of luck as well. I think the girls have done so well, but you do have to have an element of luck because against Spain, you know, Spain were the better team by far for the whole game. For 70, 80 minutes, Spain looked like they were all over England, but they can't take their chances. Now, that's when a Beth Mead comes into play because she can finish anything that's in front of her at this moment in time. When you're in that type of form, anything you touch goes in. And I think that's a major factor in this game. I really do. I think goal scoring opportunities will happen for both teams on Sunday. I think Germany will create. I think England will create. And I hope that, you know, maybe this is the game where Lauren, we've all been waiting for Lauren Hep to have in this game because I don't think she's had a bad tournament. No one in the England team has. I think she's not done as well as everybody expected her to. I think people expected Lauren Hemp to be the best player in the tournament, golden boot winner. Everybody was saying got Lauren Hemp was going to win it. Well, Beth Mead has been amazing for Arsenal this year, got player of the year, and no one really was talking about Beth Mead. So now I think Beth Mead will be spoken about forever. <laughs> England. Now I'm going to start to say England. I mean, I can't, I want them to win so badly. And I think I've been holding it in this whole tournament because my head and my heart, like I said, was telling me two different things. But now it's got, now we're like almost at the final. I'm getting those butterfly feelings and I just really, really want the girls to win. I think this tournament's been really hard to predict because all the games, I felt like the semi-final last night, Germany, France was always going to be tight. But then having said that, if teams take their chances, then you know, they win the game. Germany only beat Austria 2-0 because of Austria making two really, really poor defensive errors. But having said that, Germany dominated the game. So what we've seen in this tournament is a team that dominates possession doesn't always win. And when I say dominates, can have like 75% possession and not win the game. I don't feel like you see that very often in games, in league games or in other tournaments. So I think it's, I think it's not going to be a high scoring game. I don't, but I think it'll be a very fast game. I really do. I can't see this game being like a 3-2. I could be wrong. Um, and I never sit on the fence. I always like to give my predictions, but I can't see it being a 3-2. I think it's either going to be a 2-1 or England will win comfortably, hoping so. I mean, against Sweden, I said it would be 2-1, England won 4-0. Against Norway, I said it'd be 2-1, England won 8-0. So, I mean, I just, I think we're seeing things in this tournament that, and it's not, and I think everybody would, would have said the same thing about those games. It's not because I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, sometimes I don't, but it's based upon the fact that it's what you see. You know, you don't see these type of results happening usually very often where England is scoring, you know, 12 goals against two top Scandinavian nations. I think it's already having an impact. I think the fact that, you know, more girls, there's been one, a lot of teams around the country that are formed based upon this tournament. I saw one social media post that said, we're going to start a girls team. And I think they had over 300 girls turn up. So it's like, it's the way that you can inspire. And I've always said, seeing is believing. And I think now people realise that the women's game isn't a joke for those people that thought it was. They didn't think there was any money involved because all you ever hear about the women's game is we're not getting this, we're not getting that, which we wasn't. Whereas times have changed and still needs to continue to change. There's a lot of things that need to change going forward. But I will say that the fact that these young girls and boys and dads and mums and other family members are at these games being inspired in the way that they are, I think it's fantastic. And I also think the environments that's been created at this tournament have to be highlighted. I'm not. There's not been any fights. There's not been any trouble. There's not been any beer throwing. Now, 
I know that in the men's game, it's a little bit more hostile. And that's not to say that the women's game doesn't have that. But I think people feel safer bringing their children to the games based upon it's a safer, it's a safer environment. And that's the reality. I mean, of all the games I've been at, I've not heard any swearing. And people can say, oh, but it makes a difference. Because why would you take your children to a game like at Wembley last year when all the fans are stampede in Wembley? You know, I'm come Sunday, I'm looking forward to it because I just know that's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen because it doesn't happen. And I think people have started to see that at all the games. The, the fans are out there till, you know, 11 o'clock at night, an hour after the game, waiting for the team buses. It's honestly such a joyous occasion and a positive occasion. And I think people are seeing that. And it's all over the TV in England. It's every station you tune on, even stations that you don't even usually see football on. It's on. So, and these girls have done that. They have really done that. And I've always said it's not their job to inspire anybody. It's their job to play football and win. And that's exactly what they're going to do, hopefully.